Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me for Monday Morning Coffee. I've got the official mug going. My coffee's almost empty, so I'm going to have to go get some more, but happy Monday Morning Coffee to you. So what I'd like to talk about today are some inexpensive ways you can add some cool gear to your camera, to your photography experience that will allow you to have some more fun and maybe expand your capabilities. And I've got a couple of basic things here that are really inexpensive. Let's start with extension tubes. Now I've got two extension tubes here. You can see they're, they're just kind of rings. I can stick my finger through it. You can see there's nothing there. It's just through. But it does, this particular uh, brand does have metal contacts that carry the lens information into the camera. So what does that mean? That means that your camera functions will still work. You can still do things like autofocus. Now these are designed for macro photography. And what they do is they allow your standard lens to get a bunch closer to what you're shooting so that you can really get nice magnification. Now they typically come in sets of two or three. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter, this is a 16 millimeter, and sometimes you can add a 21 millimeter. My experience, however, has been that at 21 millimeters, you're gonna have your subject about that far from the front of the lens. So unless you have some kind of special lighting for it, it's gonna be pretty difficult to use. So if you can find the set of two, the two will be fine. And by the way, you can take the 10 and the 16 and you can stack them, they mount together. And it just has a mount just like your lens, uh, your camera body has for your lens. So you put the lens in, you put this on your camera body and you're ready to shoot, it's that simple. So I'm gonna go outside and do a couple of shots of some flowers with just the raw lens and this lens by the way, it happens to be uh, on my OM-1, it's a 12 to 40, which is a full frame equivalent of a 24 to 80. So I can show you before we go outside, I'm just gonna take my lens off. And I'm gonna separate these. There's little levers on it that just allow these to come off. I'm gonna put just the 10 on right now. And the 10, oh, let me line it up. It has little dots that match the dots on your lens. Okay, so that's on. And then again, you have the dots again that line up on your camera body. And now we have a 10 millimeter extension on the lens. And again, this is gonna allow the lens to focus closer. Yep, the 10, the 10 works really good. And again, I am, my lens is about that far away from the flower. So cool stuff really inexpensive way to get some really cool macro results for generally probably less than $40. So let's move on. So moving on, I've got an L bracket on my camera and this is from Three Legged Thing and this is a custom bracket for this camera. Now you can find generic brackets pretty cheap, probably under $40 that are even made of metal. However, when you get a bracket that is custom made for your camera, it fits exactly on your body. For example, this one ends right here, so I always have access to my battery door. And on the other side, it has openings so that I can get to all the cable connections. Now, I'm not sure the exact price of this. This is actually called the Ollie. It's specifically for the OM-1. And it's from my friends at Three-Legged Thing. I think these are, I don't know, $129 or so but they are built like tanks and they have a lot of um, adjustments that you can make, including I can extend out this one side. To go along with that, this is a tool everybody should have. I'll see if I can find a link for you. It's a carabiner hook and it has the important stuff you need like a bottle opener, uh, but it also has a standard flathead screwdriver and an Allen wrench that just happens to be, since that's what it's made for, the standard size for tripod screws. These things are a must have. This generally hangs off of my camera bag. I don't go anywhere without it because having a little flathead screwdriver and an Allen wrench is really handy. The beauty of an L bracket like this is it allows me to change the mount of my camera from vertically to horizontally without having to take a ball head and have it come all the way down to the side, which is often a problem. Since it has an Arca Swiss plate railing built into it on both sides, all you do is put it on the tripod and then when you want to flip it around, you just mount it that way. It's that simple, a must have. It is the greatest thing for anybody doing landscape photography. 
two more things for you. The first one is a circular polarizer. Now the prices of these are all over the place and you don't want to buy the cheapest polarizer you can find. If I can figure out how to actually open the case. So this is a circular polarizer. Now you can't tell much at, at me looking at it from here. But what this does is it rotates while it's on the camera lens. And it just, you buy the ones that fit the thread of your lens. And by the way, the thread information on your lens, whoop, let me release the hood, is typically on the side of the lens or on the front. So this just screws into the lens. And after, don't screw it on too tight, by the way, you're gonna have a tough time getting them off. Never screw filters on tight. But then the front of it rotates, even though it is mounted to the lens. And what that does is change the polarization. Now, the way polarization works is it's strongest when you're 90 degrees from the sun. So how do you find that? Well, point at the sun and put your thumb out. If you point at the sun, everywhere your thumb goes is 90 degrees from the sun. And at 90 degrees, the polarization is the strongest. Now, there's a little danger there because you can overpolarize. It's, you're going to get blue skies that almost go black. So you don't want that. So if you're 90 degrees, you want to back off on the polarization. And you can see the effect right through your viewfinder. So just adjust it so that it works better. I've got another lens here, or another filter here rather, with a case that also escapes me. Oh, there we go, I got that one off. And this is a neutral density filter. Now if I hold this up, you can see this looks pretty dark, and it is. What a neutral density filter is, it's like sunglasses for your camera, that are not polarized, where this is like wearing polarized sunglasses. This just cuts the amount of light going in. And these were used a lot in video, but on still photography, their primary use is to slow down your shutter speed. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're after moving water, you're shooting a waterfall and you want kind of that silky look, or at least slightly blurred water while everything else is sharp, a neutral density filter is going to do that for you. Now, neutral density filters come in different strengths, from 1 up to 15. And by the way, just like the extension tubes, you can stack these. Each number is going to half the amount of light coming in. So an ND1 is going to let half the light in as it would without having this on here. Now, that's fairly worthless. An ND1 isn't going to do a lot for you. I recommend, if you're going to start out, I would recommend with two. Get an ND3 and an ND6. You can also screw the two of them together and get an ND9. Again, something to experiment with, but if you're just starting out and you're looking where to start, I recommend getting an ND3 and an ND6. Whew, I was gonna uh, film the close of this outside, but it's disgusting outside. It is so humid, I just can't stand it. I started sweating and especially not gonna be drinking coffee out there, so I came in here to finish up for you. So what did we just look at? We looked at a handful of things. One, we looked at extension tubes, which will allow you to do macro photography with your standard lenses for a little bit of money. Then we looked at the L bracket, a must have accessory that allows you to quickly mount your camera vertically horizontally. Three, circular polarizers, a must for landscape photography. If you walk around with polarized sunglasses in, on a beautiful day and the sky looks great and then you take a picture and it looks really flat, well, we're used to polarization. Uh, so I like it in my photography. It's a personal choice, but circular polarizer to me is a must have. And then lastly, neutral density filter. Neutral density filter will allow you to slow your shutter speed and times that that is what you're after, meaning usually you want to do something with water where you want to have it slow down and have a little bit of a blur to it while everything else is sharp. I use these all the time for waterfall photography. So what I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks is I'm going to do a more in-depth dive into each of these tools so you can really get a better sense on how to put them to use. So until then, thank you for joining me today. It's good to be back after our summer vacation, and I will see you again next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.